Hi everyone, Artemis from the Quickly team here. Welcome back to another exciting Thursday theme day where we showcase our latest design. This week I will be sharing with you the Thomas theme, available in the Quickly Design library. And later on I will be showing you how to create from scratch an accordion block with the use of the Quickly interactions. Let's take a look. This week we decided to stick with a minimal design and structure for a versatile and approachable look. We like to keep our designs this way to accommodate a larger array of tastes and sensibilities and to never overwhelm users. We kept our color palette to the basics with black and white and relied solely on primary bold colors for a modern feeling. Not only does it help break the monotony of our design, but it most importantly creates contrast, which is vital to ensure readability while also highlighting content hierarchy. For example, we consciously decided to have our element paragraphs in a bold and striking red primary color that not only grabs the user's attention, but also lets them know where they are on the page. The same goes for our electric primary blue that does a great job at being noticeable, hopefully leading the users to take action and thus heighten conversion rates. Our hero is fairly simple and classic. However, with the use of our parallax image, we can create a nice idea of depth and dynamism that is always important to bear in mind. Now let's move on to building our accordion block with the use of the Quickly Interaction property. Here we are in the Gutenberg editor on our front page in the section where we will be building our accordion block. Our accordion structure is the following. A div in which we will nest two divs, inside which will be in one div our accordion's header and in the other our accordion's content. It's so simple. Let's select the second column and add a div. Let's give it a column direction. Let's now add a second div in this div that will contain an icon and an h2 heading. Let's give it a row direction and center it. We can now add a 20 pixel sized icon. For this accordion block, I specifically chose a plus symbol because as we will see later on, a nice effect can be made with this specific icon. Let's give it a white icon color and black background color to make it stand out better. Let's head to the advanced tab and into the margin and padding panel and set an equal 10 pixel padding. Let's now head to the borders panel in order to give our icons edges a rounded edge. Let's set an equal 50 pixel border radius. Let's now add our 25 pixel H2 heading and capitalize it. As you can see, our icon and H2 heading are too close to each other and need some space between them. So let's select our icon and head to the advanced tab and into the margin and padding panel and set a 25 pixel right margin. Let's now select a div containing our icon and h2 heading and add a bottom border for a more striking look and to hopefully hint to the users to push on the div. Let's head to the advanced tab and into the borders panel and set a 1 pixel bottom border width and top right and left 0 pixel border width. The blocks in our div are touching our border which is not the desired look. Let's head to the margin and padding panel to fix this. Let's set a top, bottom and right 30 pixel padding and 10 pixel left padding. Let's select our parent div and insert another div that will contain our accordion's content that will drop down. We can add our 18 pixel sized paragraph block. Once again, selecting the div containing this paragraph, let's head to the Advanced tab into the Margin and Padding panel 
and set a top and bottom 40 pixel padding and left and right 30 pixel padding. We have added all the blocks that will constitute our first accordion block. Before adding our two others, we can add specific class names to our elements to make it easier to work with for our interactions. Let's select our accordion's header and give it the CC drop down click class name. Let's select our accordion's content and give it the CC drop down content class name. Let's select our accordions container and give it the CC drop down container class name. And lastly, we can select our icon and give it the drop down icon class name. Let's now copy this accordion block for our two other accordion blocks. So let's select our accordions container and open the copy paste menu and select copy blocked linked. Selecting our column, we can insert copied block twice. I will quickly fill in the text elements and icon. Now we can display our content as none because we only want to be able to see this content when we push on our accordion's header. We can simply select our first content and open the navigator and toggle the eye. We can now set up our interactions by selecting the interactions button. The goal is for when we push on our accordion's header, the content drops down smoothly. We also want our accordions to be linked so that when a content is open and another is opened, the latter closes. Because we want our accordion block to be linked, we can't just toggle the slide because it won't do anything to another block that's already toggled. Thus, we need to work with classes instead of toggling slides themselves. Basically, if the accordion container has the active class, it will open. If it doesn't, it will close. Let's start by setting our target to selector and type in the class name we chose for our accordion's header, which in our case is CC dropdown click. Let's not forget to place a dot in front of this. It is a class. Let's hit the plus symbol to add our interaction. Our action will be remove class containing the active class. Because we want the accordion to be linked, we can't just toggle the slide because it won't do anything to another block that's already toggled. When there is the active class, it will open. If it doesn't have the active class, it will close. Let's add a target that will include our accordion container. Let's add the no parent condition. Let's now add a second interaction. The action is to toggle class, the active class. Let's add the parent target. Let's now add a third interaction. The action is slide down with the target being the selectors active plus our accordion's content. Let's not forget to add a dot in front of these class names. Lastly, let's add a fourth interaction. The action is slide up. The target includes our accordion's content. Let's add the condition parent doesn't include the active class. And there we've set up our interactions in a few clicks. We could stop here. However, I like to style my accordions when our elements are active for a dynamic feeling with the use of relative styling. So, let's select our accordions container and add the active class to see how our relative style looks. Keeping our accordions container selected, let's head to the advanced tab and scroll down to the relative styling panel and add one. We will be having two relative styles, one for our H2 heading and another for our icon. 
Let's rename this relative styling to something familiar and leave combinator as such. Set the selector type to class and add the active class. We can add another field, set the combinator as descendant, the selector as class, and paste in our h2 headings class name. We can now edit this relative style by hitting the Edit button. Let's head to the Typography panel and set a red text color. Now, let's add the relative style that will affect our icon. Let's rename it once again to something familiar. Let's repeat the same process we had followed for our H2 headings relative style, but add our icon's class name. Let's now edit this relative style. Let's head to the icon panel and set a red color that nicely matches our H2 headings text color. Heading to the transforms panel, we can toggle the rotate property. The idea is that when the icon is active with the help of a bit of rotation, the plus symbol looks like it is a cross which is fitting to indicate that if the user pushes the accordion's header, it can close it. So let's set the rotate to 50 pixels. Now, let's exit this relative styling and remember to remove the active class from our accordion's container. Let's quickly ensure our design's responsiveness by switching to mobile view and setting our H2 headings font size to 20 pixels. And voila! We have finished constructing an accordion block in a few minutes that is completely customizable. The versatility and possibilities of interactions are endless and know only the limit of the designer's imagination. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this week's focus on interactions and more specifically the accordion block. As always, if you have any questions or maybe even requests for certain shapes or elements you'd like to see built next, be sure to let us know down below. See you next time. Bye!